Hi everybody, it's Martin again. Uh, tonight I'm tying a permit fly, the Kung Fu Crab, you can see it there, for a pinky tan version. So I'm going to start with a, get my one out, S10S 4H in the and the vice is a nice strong hook. Got to run on a bed of pink anvils. I'll just make sure I cover up that wee step at the. It's quite often a sharp edge. Um, at the return of the eye. I'm going to tie in my my weight, which is just a pair of dumbbell eyes. And I'm leaving a wee bit of room so that I can uh, put a wee guard in this later. Just, just make sure the, the eyes are seated nice and square and level. And then take some wraps over the eyes and under the shank. And then under the eyes and over the shank and between the eyes and the shank just to tighten everything up and lock it all in place and just to be sure stick on some wee bit of super glue and I'll run it right in the shank so that everything's got a, a right good grip to the vice here then just make sure I've got a nice base of thread to tie on and to clear the claws I'm going to make a an, a small ball of um, chenille. You could use cactus chenille or whatever. I'm just using this uh, sparkle chenille, um, an orange. Again, you might change the colour. You know, if you're tying an olive crab, you might use chartreuse. So I'm just going to make a wee a wee ball. Oops. And this just helps to sort of splay the claws and support your eyes. I've seen these tied with like um, nylon dumbbells, like you would put in a, a tarpon fly on a toad. But I like I like uh, eyes on stocks for my crabs. Just trim that there and tidy up. I'm going to tie in my eyes. That's not a very good eye. It'll be fine. Just the epoxy eyes. Uh, I generally make my own, but these are actually EP eyes. Um, I've been lying around. Another large. So, what I like to do is I cut them to just roughly the length, just the long, longer than I need. Um, 
so that I can kind of crush. I can crush the stems with a pair of pliers at the back here just to get a bit of extra grip for the thread. And also I make sure they're the same length. And then another, and just keep the tie-in point just the same, and it means your eyes are definitely even. Just secure them, and because the because the nylon look changes shape under the wraps, you know, the flat the flat area and then the round area, it should it should never really pull out. But, just in case, give them a wee, uh, wee lick of glue, just to make sure you don't want any one-eyed crabs. So then I'm going to take these claws that I've made with um, Zonker strip. Just a tan zonker. I coloured the tips red with a marker and then just brushed it out so it was sort of the fibres were all separated again. You split them and then you just coat each each point with um some UV resin. I mean if you were so inclined you could still use epoxy but you'd need to be nuts. Take ages to be murder. The UV resin makes it so much better, so especially for things like this where you don't want the hair would sag, you know. Um, let's just so tie in one, and then the other. Bolish and he'll also helps to flay your, your claws, making it look sort of defensive. And then just tidy everything up, make it nice and neat and smooth before I start tying the body. You know, if you Spend a bit of time here just making everything nice and smooth and flat and tidy. It, it makes for a much better fly, much more durable. And it makes, uh, makes the next stage easier as well. So, for the body, I'm using EP fibre, um, but you could use sparkle yarn, you know, Lydia's carpet yarn, and brush it out um, just as easily. It's actually um, possibly easier to tie if you use the sparkle yarn because you don't need to worry about the fibres of or tangling up. So just figure it and the first bunch, this is just um, tan, I'm going to alternate colours, um, so I'm figuring it in, then pulling it as far to the, the back as I can, just taking a couple of wraps to sort of tighten everything up. Get some ribbon, 
a wee bit of red in that there somehow, but I don't know, no worry about it. And then the second colour I'm using is bronze, which is, you know, it's not that much darker, but it is a bit darker. And the same thing. Colourless wraps. Pull it back that way. Figure that in. This vase is what's like. I'm in a bit of trouble with my vase here. What's going on? There we go. Um, and just pull it back. Get a grip of it. And wrap over. Tighten, it, tighten up the wraps here. That will just hold it in place. stick it on your thumbnail what I just did. Don't worry about these straggly fibers, they'll be covered up. If you get any like if you trap any, it's no it's not really that big a deal. Um it will be covered up by the as you go along. And if you notice, I'm always tying them in at that angle so that the my off side um, there you are. so that the off side bunch is forward at first so I can tie in can tie between this bunch easily and I leave this long because it means it's it's easy for me to keep it separate from from the the near side brush uh, bunch to get the figure eight in you only need three or four wraps in each direction Obviously by the time you get to your final bunch it's a, it's a bit difficult because um, it's, just, it's getting shorter but it's still as long as you keep a hold of it you, know, you can still manage that just don't let go As far as possible, anyway. There we go, and that's the body pretty much tied. Um, I like to trim the body now, so I'm just going to throw a quick, quick finish. And just pick everything, grab all the hair, and just, just come in there at an angle. And that makes sure your body's e even on both sides. You know, you don't need, like, if, you, if you trim it um, initially, Come in and tidy up any wee shapes that you don't like. If you make your initial trim like separately, it can be quite hard to to um, keep them even. And it'll make them sp sp spin either as you as you uh, strip them if you're stripping them, or uh, they can even spin on the cast. 
you would twist in your leader of the if they're all wonky. So the next thing is uh, the legs. And I always stick four pairs of legs in. Um, so I've just got some sand local legs. They call it sand, but it's a kind of pinky colour. Um, and I'm just going to fold two full lengths. I've still left the tabs on them just to, to help them, to help me control them. And I'm just going to fold them across the thread, catch them in like that. Right, one turn, and then we'll tangle that. There we go. So I've got. bunch in the back there, right, two or three turns, and then I'll grab this bunch and fold it back so that the, the legs are doubled over and they're kind of pointing up, and then again just kind of keep them all together, I like to cut them just sort of beyond the body, this last, well, length and a half, sort of halfway down the claws. That's plenty long enough, I think. You might want them longer or shorter. Then you can keep them for uh, small bonefish flies or something. Ideal. Let's tidy that up and bring my thread to the front. The legs sort of stick up and waft around on this. Yeah, quite good. Quite like the Kung Fu Crab. Um, so I'm going to tie in a weed guard on this, as I mentioned. And I'm just, I'm actually going to actually use the, I'm just using the stock for the, the EPI. Nice and robust stuff. Not too stiff, just stiff enough. It's good. I like it. And I've crushed the end flat. Right, about a, it's about a quarter of an inch. Something like that, five, six mil anyway. Uh, and I'm just going to catch the end of it. Go for on the top of the shank, cover it up, and then pull it quite tight so that the flat the flat section is tied down and it's going through the eye so you know that obstructing your eye with uh, your weed guard, but then it's not going to slip, you know. So I'll, I'll lash that down, kind of bend it up and just bang some, get plenty of turns in behind it as well, just to help stand it up. wraps around it, pull it that way, then I'll do a couple of wraps the opposite direction, pull it that way, and just hold it straight up, and that, it's just, that just makes sure it's dead in line, and then I'll just whip finish it behind, because I like to throw my whip finish behind the weed guard as well, just to prevent any risk of the tons of the whip finish um, 
forcing the reed guard back. Plenty of tons. And that's it. Just got a bit of zapper gap on the thread wraps here. And then I'll quote it with Sally Hansen's later. Um, that's a Kung Fu crab. I hope you liked that. If you did or if you didn't. Uh, please don't forget to leave a comment below. Tell me what you think. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks a lot guys. Right.